Man, what would I give for a switch that would make me just care a little bit less about stumbling throughout the review. Because after all, that's not what matters. It's the information that I will give you, which you will get on the Nubia Z17. And I know the review is long overdue. A lot of you have been asking for it. After all, I have it for about three or four weeks by now. But I also told you from the start that I'm not going to review this phone without Google services running on it. Fortunately enough though, I just managed to do that about a week ago. Unfortunately enough though, this does not mean that everything is perfect now. I'll tell you more about that later on in the software part, but for now, I would like to continue with the design and the build. And that is still super solid and nothing has changed since my first impressions opinion because super solid, super sturdy, very premium, but a little bit weird also because we have this kind of like powder coated metal finish back that feels very nice, but very unique and just a little bit weird, a little bit slippery. But we can also see we have some slight little curved sides, but a flat back and this design actually makes this phone feel a little bit more bulky in the hand, but maybe as it would be a quite bulky 5.2 incher, which it is not because it is a 5.5 incher with pretty much no bezels. And I think this is just something you have to wrap your, wrap your head around because as you can see, it's so much narrower compared to something like a OnePlus 3T or even a 5. The 5 though, I still think is actually easier to handle because one end usability actually isn't maybe that great for a 5.5 incher. But like I said, that's maybe just a thing off my head. Now, the fingerprint reader is very reliable, but as you can also already see, it's just not fast, especially with the quite slow screen on turn, image, screen turn on with the fade in and fade out animation, which is, I think, a little bit unnecessary because it just makes the whole unlocking process longer. We also can see here the dual cam a little bit sticking out and the dual flash. Then we have an RR blaster microphone, SD card and SIM card tray. On the bottom, unfortunately, no headphone jack, but you get at least an adapter with it and the speaker on the right, USB type C in the middle and the microphone on the left. Now the buttons are placed in my opinion, just about right. They maybe don't have so much of an audible feedback, but a very nice tactile feedback and they feel very premium. The notification light, once again, is here the breathing light flanked by two capacitive buttons, which you of course can rearrange. And we've already seen the pretty much bezel as design. We don't really have too much to talk about that because it is flat, but a nice transition. So it definitely feels very high quality. Now let's talk about the display because on screen different display preferences, what you have here is color temperature control, but we also get an sRGB mode, which doesn't really feel like sRGB to me and also sun sand display mode. But what that does is pretty much just boost the contrast to make things easier in the sun. But that's something that actually diminishes the overall qualities. With about 565 lux though, it is still good enough for sunlight readability. Definitely not the best, but definitely still good enough. But it is a high quality and very well calibrated panel because the viewing angles are stable. White is very nice. Black is also quite deep and it just is calibrated so pleasantly, especially if you use the slightly more boosted mode, you get so nice colors. And even though we don't have the highest resolution anymore by these day standards, this in my opinion still is a flagship level display. Now, what about the speaker? In normal use, I don't really see blocking to be an issue. And I would say the maximum volume is also quite good, maybe not more. And the overall quality is still good. So I will give it a quite loud with a good speaker sound arrangement because the balance is nice, but I've definitely already heard better ones, especially for a flagship. I would just wish to get something a little bit better. The headphone jack is good if you use the included adapter because we don't have a headphone jack. We also have some extra options. I will show them off later on in the software part, but Good is still better than average, I would say. So let's just get into the next thing, which is a little bit something weird, because as you can see here, here is the way we get into the last app. So now we have a dedicated button, which we didn't have in the past on Nubia devices, but a double tap does not bring you to the last app, which is just weird. Now, but the performance, I have to say, since I can't really kill off all of them, I can. What am I even talking about? It is the screen or um, uh, yeah. Let's forget it. Let's just let's just check the screen launch time. As you can see, these are very fast because after all, it's a very, very responsive phone. As you can see here, everything super nice, very nice. Now, is it a flagship in terms of performance? Absolutely. With the 835, even though it doesn't have an AMOLED display, it doesn't maybe always seem 
crazy smooth for an IPS display with an actually quite high refresh rate. It feels super nice because this feels a little bit smoother, at least with less motion blur than most phones that I've reviewed out there. So a very pleasant experience. So great display because of the very fluid animations, scrolling is buttery smooth. Multitasking would be great if we would be having a kind of better recent apps menu because I still think this is not the best. Of course, what you get here is the way that you have these edge gestures that make you give it a different option to switch between the apps. But still, I would wish for something a little bit more traditional because I cannot complain about the performance. It is absolutely easily top five on level with the OnePlus 5, pretty much on level with the HTC U11 and also with the Sony Xperia XZ Premium or the Xiaomi Mi 6. All are pretty much the same. So I'm super impressed with that. Also gaming performance, just about as good, very fluid because especially with a 1080p display, you can get so nice high frame rates, pretty much no break-ins. Of course the chip will get warmer, but in normal use you at least should not experience any sort of throttling, which maybe you will see on numbers if you do some benchmarks, but I would not care about that. So play as long as you want with as nice as a gaming experience as you can get. Now, battery life is something a little bit too shaky because it supports already quick charge 4.0. But what we get included is the 3.0 charger and that's why one, one hour and 50 isn't all that fast because there are just no quick charge 4 chargers available. So once you have that, you can get that and then your charge should be faster. Even though I have to say 8% for an hour of YouTube is very good and also the values that I got in my normal use kind of match what I would have expected because we get about five and a half hours on mobile data and I would say at least easily seven hours plus if not even eight maybe on Wi-Fi. So definitely very good battery life and I would say easily without any problems. Great. But I also have to mention that syncing didn't properly work. I will get to that a little bit more later in the software part. And once everything is working, it could maybe be a little bit weaker, but I've not noticed the pretty much any... No significant difference or one at all on the Xiaomi with that issue back then. So I don't think it will really happen now. Software. This is now the part where I have to talk quite a lot about because I'm not quite as happy with the UI as I was in the past. First of all, it comes with 7.1.1 out of the box, which is nice. And if you get it now from any pretty much um, import shop, you will get it with a shop ROM. This means you will already get Google services running. You will get pretty much everything that you need running which I am not because I have the Chinese stock ROM and I had to manually kind of use or a custom recovery to get Google services running and they run, but notifications don't always work. So I have some trouble. Sometimes notifications come in, sometimes they don't. So it's not really reliable. And as you can already see, I have an update waiting for me, but I can't apply it because I have a custom recovery running. And even though I did revert it back to stock, I just wasn't able to get this update finished. So I should have done this before, but I just didn't get that. But let me talk about the UI itself, because as you can see here, we don't have an app draw. Not an issue for me, you can just use a third party launcher. As you can see, if you swipe down, you don't have quick settings because these are now accessed if you swipe up, which I don't think is the very best solution. It's very iOS-like and maybe if you like that, it will be fine, but it's just something very, very hard to wrap your head around if you are using Android phones usually. And you can't really rearrange those icons unless I've maybe missed something. And I would have just preferred it to be the old standard classical way. Otherwise, we have a lot of features because fit, for example, you can, for example, swipe from the edges to with the two fingers to switch the brightness, double click to the edge to go back. And you have a lot more, as you can see here. We also get screen split, super snap on the more features we have, for example, the custom button key, which now is the task button. But now there is no menu button anymore. And actually, it it is it feels a little bit weird because yeah because yeah i i really don't know what else to say it is just the way it is of course remote camera red pack red packet assistance so yeah you get a lot of features you get a lot of customization especially for sound i already said we have dolby atmos software where you can change it a little bit around and the problem is just the thing that you either have a shop ROM and won't really get any updates from what I've seen from techtablets.com, which has such a word. He doesn't have an update app anymore, which I have, but I can't update because I rooted it. So maybe I would have kind of revert completely back and then maybe go forth and back. So as it is right now, it's quite hard to get Google services running with updates 
but I guess you won't really get many anyway, so it is a little bit of a back and forth, but I would say let's just move past that. I'll talk a little bit later on in the conclusion, but for now, let's talk about the dead camera. And I just have to say, it's very typical for a Nubia cam, which means the farther you are away, the better the selfies get. But if you get super close, as you can see, it just doesn't focus well enough because it doesn't have autofocus. And the focus is just a little bit way back behind. As you can see, you also need kind of like arms stretched, but then, that I would actually maybe at least give it a very good, if not even an almost great. But just because of that zoom issue, if you want to be a little bit closer, is just about a very good in my opinion. But otherwise, otherwise I can't complain. The quality is nice, colors seem good. And especially the video, as you can see, it looks a little bit over contrasty, but it feels very smooth. Nice colors and overall, and definitely still enjoyable also inside. The microphone is also very high quality. I really like that. Maybe not something really properly stabilized, as you can see, so it is shaking if you have shaky hands. But let's just move past that and talk about low light. As you can see here, with the flash and without, actually still looks very good. And I would definitely say it's quite a nice low light cam. Definitely not the best one, but definitely very, very pleasing. Outside, I can't really give it more than a very good, because as you can see, colors clip quite often, especially under heavy sunlight. And I'm kind of missing details a little bit here. It feels a little bit flat. We have a very extreme bokeh effect, which is super nice. But therefore, I think a little bit of some details are just sometimes missing. So I can't give it more than a very good, maybe an almost great, but I would kind of already stretch it because especially some, yeah, the quality is really, really nice, absolutely. But I think it's just not quite on a flagship, flagship level. On a Chinese flagship level, maybe, but not on the international level, like for example, S8 G6 or something like that, because then I would just wish for something a little more consistent of a better experience overall. And video is also one thing, because ADA shows me we have stabilization support, but there is no option for EIS or something like that. We definitely don't have optical image stabilization. But what I have to say is that the video quality actually, especially with the really nice, well working and fast and subtle, autofocus works super nice, but artifacting is going on. And we have definitely some quite shaky footage because there are actually some videos that show off the quite bad stabilization or non, non-existent stabilization. If that is not an issue for you, you definitely will get quite nice video because as you can see, it looks definitely great. And I can't really complain. Also 1080p60 support, of course, not quite as sharp, but there, no artifacting and just so nice. And I definitely still like the camera on its own a lot. It's just not the best one. Actually better for video, than for pictures, I would say. But due to the shakiness, maybe after all, not so much. And that's why I would say, let's just continue with the pros and cons. Here, we have definitely a very great build quality, super narrow, side to bezel less design, a reliable fingerprint reader, but just not the fastest one. The display is still great and it is worthy to be on a flagship. The speaker is quite loud and overall good. The headphone jack is good as well, but you need an adapter for that. We have an absolutely top-notch flagship performance, top five without any issues, great battery life nonetheless. We have a feature-rich software, but it also has a few kind of compromise we have to live with, which I will go into later. In terms of cameras, very good front-facing cam, a very good front-facing video cam, a really good low-light cam, very good main cam, a very good video cam, and it supports Quick Charge 4.0. Now, what's not that great? First of all, something that I have messed with, it's not a huge issue, but the capacitive buttons actually misfired quite often, so I tapped and just nothing happened. This was a little bit annoying and it was actually noticeable. App screen dimming is also something, especially apps, for example, like I think it was Google+, Plus, also Google Photos sometimes, and Instagram, that just dimmed a little bit, which I'm just not a big fan of. I just want to mention it. Not as annoying as on some Huawei phones, but it's still there. No headphone jack, but the adapter is included. Software has some quirks. Just for example, the multitasking, we don't have a double tap and some things just work a little bit different, especially with the notifications not working properly yet. That leads me to the next point. No Google, no Google services without flashing uh, the, the services or getting a shop ROM. Usually it also has to be imported and overall it's just a little bit less spectacular than expected, which is the one main reason why I can fully recommend it over, for example, something like a OnePlus 5, because there you just get, in the my, my experience, more cohesive, well-rounded, more true product, because just in terms of design and build quality, display and speaker and everything else, it would definitely be well worth the money that you pay for this. 
But with the software quirks for right now, with the notifications not working properly, with if you use a shop ROM not being able to update it, which is also not really all that easily possible if you use maybe a custom recovery and flash the Google service, this is just a little bit too much hassle for a phone that even if all of that would be running, wouldn't be spectacular anyway. So it is a very nice, and I would actually say without a problem, it is a great phone especially for the price. But you also just have to consider that by now, if you, for example, import something like a OnePlus 5 and not buy it from OnePlus directly, you pay about 440 now as well. And then it's pretty much on par. And then you just get way less trouble with the OnePlus 5. You get easier updates. Updates is something that Nubia still isn't known for. But if you want the pretty much most narrow phone that you can find with an absolutely astonishing build quality, super nice, and overall still at least very good, if not slightly better qualities, I can still recommend it. But I just don't have the easiest time, at least without you knowing the quirks that come along with that. You've seen that on the, on the con side. That doesn't mean though that all the cons don't really impress anyways. So I have some mixed feelings and I think maybe in a few weeks or maybe a little bit longer once all the software quirks have been figured out, this could be an even better phone, especially since then also the price should be dropped. But I really don't know what else to say. If you want to know anything, just let me know down there in the comments below. If you liked it, thumbs up and a subscription. Otherwise, have a nice day. Bye.